Hi there. This is the first episode of a potential series I'd like to call Really Good Games. This series will be covering games that are, well, really good. A lot of these games are so good that many people don't know how good they are. This is exactly the case with today's game, Isle of the Dead. Some of you might already know this game and might be thinking, Isle of the Dead? That's not a really good game, that's one of the worst FPS games ever made! Well, I'm here to show you what's up. Before we even play the game, we're gonna check out the manual. Actually, screw that, let's read something better. The comic book. Yeah, some copies come with a black and white comic book to go with the game. Alright, so you have this cool cover, which is a variant of the cover art shipped with certain versions of the game. Not only that, but when you open up the book, you get a look at the totally rad developers of this game, Rainmaker Software. First off, you got the Binary Boys, Bruce J. Mack and Brian Kelch, the programmers of the crew. They'll program your game while not dressing lame. I want a jacket like those ones. I bet if this was in color, they'd be black jackets with green numbers. Uh, yeah. Up next, you have Mapmaster Oyster Boy, or W. Scott Simmons. This guy knows his cartography like he knows his fashion. Very cool. In the middle is none other than Funky Fresh Shecky, or Mick Friedman. Word. He's got the talent to do art assets for entire games in two to three months. Some of you might know his work from other endeavors, but we'll talk about that later. The next in our lineup is DJ Easy Angus, who if I'm not mistaken is A. Sean Glassbell the brain behind the innovative story of Isle of the Dead. He'll design smash hit games that sell in the thousands. Last but not least, we have DJ Jazzy Scott, Scott the Skinny Man Lower, writer of the smash hit. Okay, before I go any further, I should clarify that I'm playing the CD-ROM version of the game, which was released a while after the initial release. This has a few changes, but the biggest one we'll note right now is the music. A little bit better, huh? There's more music in this version too, and the variety does help the tedium we'll be up against. Anyway, now that we've met the Rainmaker crew, let's read a bit about the comic. It's survival of the fittest, and for reasons unknown, a plane with Isle Air is about to crash into the ocean. Luckily they find Nuwapu Island, where they can potentially land instead of becoming shark bait. The plane lands and throws one passenger, Jake Dunbar, out of the plane. Luckily, he survives this ordeal, but he is being watched. As for his fellow passengers... Oh my god! Dead! They're all dead! Not even the pilots survived this ordeal either, but hey look, a shotgun! This shotgun immediately comes in handy as he blows the brains out of an attacking zombie. Yes, Jake, you hang on to that shotgun. You'll need it. After this ordeal, Jake starts grabbing everything he can find. Something you should be doing if you want to play this game. He also decides to look for the natives of Nuwapu, who hopefully are friendlier than the North Sentinelese. Maybe Jake can get an explanation about what's happening. Maybe the natives can help him off the island. All this and more will be found out when we start up the game. Let me clarify a few things before we start. I am not playing this on original hardware. This is through DOSBox. To make things simpler, I'm running it with 30,000 cycles, which seems to make the game not too fast, but not too slow, for the most part. Some parts will speed up when looking at them up close, while others will run slow as hell, like when there's a bunch of enemies on the screen. Another thing to note is that the CD-ROM version is pretty damn censored. The good part about this is that you can sort of uncensor it. These assets for the machete can be easily overwritten by the ones you'll find on the floppy version. You can add in most of the missing death scenes by taking them from the floppy version too. I think at least one death won't work with this method, but it's better than nothing. With all this said, let's begin. <laughs>
First off, we kinda start where the comic left off. In the CD-ROM version, you'll have the shotgun in the first area to kind of fit with the comic's theme. On the floppy disk version, it's on the other end of the island, which is kind of odd. You also want to go into the fiery wreckage of the plane you just popped out from too. You need some stuff there, like the wire cutters, the machete, or the bamboo stick if you didn't uncensor it. The native phrasebook, which is useful for communicating with the locals of Nuwapu Island, a flare gun in the cockpit, and even the compass. You'll have to use the wire cutters to free that from the cockpit first. With that, you're all ready to go. Make sure you get the jacket and the med kit in addition to everything else too. Med kits are pretty rare, but don't fret. There's lots of fruit on the island that'll be your primary source of health should you need it. There's an option for play levels in the menu that will reduce the amount of health these items will heal you for, as well as reducing the amount of ammo you'll find while also increasing the amount of zombies you'll fight. Mm, no thanks. Well now that we have everything, let's go look for the native village. What does our map say? Oh. Oh. No offense, but I think Map Master Oyster Boy didn't put enough info in this map. So let's make life a bit easier. This map by G-Man Libs will be our saving grace. Look at it carefully to gain its knowledge. Print out a copy. Hang it on your wall. Print out another copy. Then eat it. Only then will you be ready to navigate this damned isle. So now that we have a clearer idea of where to go, we'll head northwest. Apparently there's a rifle there. Some parts of the island will require you to use your machete to cut through to another part. Pay very close attention to these textures because they're hard to make out. It's even worse on the floppy version, trust me. So over here is apparently a rifle, so let's get it. Ah, this little bunker looks like where we need to go. Here it is, a rifle. Let's grab it. <laughs> What? Oh, hold, hold on, roll that footage back. What did I do wrong? Oh, there's a trip wire. You sneaky little... Alright, the developers really want to punish you for not looking carefully, it seems. If you die, you go back to the very start of the game. So if you didn't save, you'll probably have to grab everything that you grabbed before. So let's do some saving. This time, we're going to cut the trip wire with wire cutters. There we go. Now let's grab the rifle and the ammunition. Say, while we're around here, let's try it out on some zombies, huh? <laughs> oh, so I guess the rifle's a fool's errand then. It's broken and useless, huh? Well actually what I was supposed to do was look around the bunker for oil in a rag. But not this guy. He won't help us in our journey anymore. Let's use the oil on the rag and then rub the rag on the rifle. There we go. Now the rifle is actually useful. Yes, it's quite useful indeed. Most enemies go down in one or two shots from it, as opposed to the shotgun or machete's three hits. Different enemies have different amount of hits required to kill them. You can follow this easy rule though. The bigger they are, the tankier they are. The zombie kids only take one shot from a shotgun or machete. The lady zombie and slimy zombie take either two shots from the shotgun or machete, or one shot from the rifle. The rest take 3 shots from the shotgun or machete, or 2 shots from the rifle. Get used to these enemies, because you'll be fighting them for 95% of the game. Fun! So now we have the weapons and a sense of where to go, let's head over to the native villages. The first village won't let us in, so we'll have to go to the one in the south. Mogoma the big guy do. Hmm... With a little help from our newfound phrasebook, we can communicate with the natives of Nuwapu. Stop! Where do you think you're going? Um... Take me to your leader? Oh no! We're not part for that one again! You eat him! Excuse me? You're excused. Can I see him? See who? Your leader! Who are you, light skin? I'm just a pilot. I crashed on the beach. Ha! Nice try. If you don't let me pass, I'll put a dime-sized hole in the center of your forehead. Okay, you go in. Have a nice day. Thanks, guys. What's a dime? Right, so the leader should be able to help us out of this mess, right? Where is he? Not here. Not here. Oops. 
Ah, uh, there we are. We still need to use the phrase book with him, too. Hmm. Hmm, you not like other light skin? Who are you? I'm Jake Dunbar. You come in great, Iron Bird? Maybe you stop curse. Curse? Many moons ago, strange white men come to island. Build great fortress. Since then, island plagued by nut alives. I think I get the picture. And my people disappear. They attack village and take everything. Everything? Yes, everything. Food, treasures, beer. They even take my daughter last night. Gosh, that's terrible. Yes, it is. I suppose I should offer to save her then. It would make game plot more interesting. So, where's this fortress? Hidden deep in jungle. Oracle of Temple show you. Where is this temple? Not far. You must talk to my brother on far side of island. He's a bit flaky. Beware of the night demons. Okay, I'll be back. Let us hope so, Jake Dunbar. Alright, with his approval, we can now go into the first village we came across. Let's talk to these similar looking guards now. Stop! Where you go? I've come to see the chief. His brother sent me. Oh no, we not fall for that foot again. Let's cook him and eat him. What? <laughs> <laughs> they always fall for that one. Can I see him? See who? Your leader. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Say, do you two have brothers in the other village also? Yeah, how you know? Just a hunch. Alright, I wonder if the chieftain is in a different shack this time. There's, uh, this guy. But, uh, we'll, we'll let him be. Let's look around. Oh, uh, okay. Moving on. Oh, you guys are here? What, what does this mean? Oh, oh, the answer is 42. Uh, of, of course. Thanks. So let's see the chief. There he is. He looks like quite the man's man, but when you talk to him, you might realize that my description may be a bit more apt than I thought. Hi ho, Thaler. What blows you into town? Uh, my name is Jake. I was sent by your brother. Y your guards look like the pair of the shamans. There was a little mix-up. Really? Their parents have been through enough, with all those tabloid shows and everything. We just don't talk about that anymore. I'm amazed. The shaman sent me to find out what's happening on this island. I'll tell you what's happening, big guy. All the men are disappearing, and I've got a splitting headache. Before we do anything else, Jake, prove your manhood to me and find a way to stop that infernal racket. How do I do that? Use your head, Jake. Right. Racket, huh? I, I, I guess it's this guy doing it, huh? Let's try, uh, talking to him. Uh, nope. Don't work. Alright. You leave me no choice. I feel bad now. Let's go talk to the chief again. Oh, you are a prince. Now how may I be of service to you? I need your help to see the oracle. You'll need my sacred amulet to gain entrance. Take it, Jack Dunbar. Thanks, chief. The oracle always demands a sacrifice. I'll be heading back to his village now. Take care, come back and see me sometime. Yeah, later, chief. Alright, the chief says we'll have to meet the oracle now. We have his medallion now, but we need the shamans too. I'm sure he won't mind if we just take them. Say, maybe those big bolt cutters might come in handy too. But I don't want to steal from him. What do we do? Well, remember that jacket? If you look at it, you'll find a pack of smokes. This guy is quite the smoker, so let's offer him a smoke. Oh, good smokes. You are more than generous. Jake Dunbar, what can I offer in return? Well, those bolt cutters might come in handy. Is that what they are? We use it to pierce noses. 
Would you mind wiping it off first? Nice. These cutters will come in handy, I'm sure. But let's go find the oracle first. You might notice at this point that I'm just running through areas filled with enemies. Yeah, the combat isn't really that engaging. Case in point. Yeah, that's fun, huh? Before we see the oracle, we'll need a sacrifice though. But what kind, you ask? Well, the game doesn't tell you! You need to go to these caves over here on this part of the island, find at least one bad doggy in the caves, kill it, then grab its corpse. Now that we have that, we can finally go to the oracle. Let's offer this doggy corpse to the oracle and talk to him. Hello? Anybody home? No, no one, one here, here but us oracles! Hey, you're not alive! Of, of course, course I am! am. I'm, I'm talking, talking to your non-believing self, self, aren't I? Wow, I'm amazed! As well you should be. How do you exist? In cyberspace, my son. All things are possible. Uh, I need some help. Yes, less people means less sacrifices to the oracle. So, what do I do? I'll save my people! Be more specific. Starve the humming box. Okay. You'll need this. Thanks. Aw, oh, cool, a submachine gun. The game calls it an Uzi. Uh, but, but that's not right. What, what is this? What is this? I asked a few people who know more about guns than me, and one says it looks like a ZZ-75. It looks like some sort of machine pistol for sure, but uh, you be the judge. Comment section go wild. But anyways, we have a good gun now, so let's use it by storming that gate. <laughs> oh. What did the Oracle say again? Starve the humming box. Oh, that's right. It's the generator. You need to destroy it. It's all the way over here, damn it. That means I'll have to fight through more of these pricks to get it. Oh, okay. I guess I'll randomly die. No, wait. Look at the ground. There's a rope there. Hard to see, right? God damn it. Where's that generator? Okay, okay. Humming box starved. Stupid box wasn't humming at all. Let's open the gate for real. So now we're in the stupid scientist's stupid complex with the stupid buildings, and in the middle of the stupid complex are a bunch of stupid zombies that you have to stupidly kill if you want to grab the stupid ammo safely. Oh, so much fun, right? Right, we're gonna check out this building. There's a zombie and a bunch of things lying around. All I can grab though are the beaker and the syringe, so let's take those. I bet we'll need them. But you lay there though, buddy. I ain't coming back for you. Here we are, in the mad scientist's lair. He's been tauntingly laughing at all my deaths so far, you bastard. How about I break your TV, you loser? Yeah, get widescreen, dork. In this lair, we'll find a bunch of tanky assistants working for the scientist. Good thing this place has ammo for our Uzi, so we can quickly mow them down. In one corner, we'll see our hero in a mirror, as well as a syringe full of a strong-smelling drug. Uh, sure, let's take that too. Now we have that, let's check this door. Help! Save me! Hey, look, it's the girl! Gotta have the girl in these kinds of games, right? Let's try saving her. So clicking all the buttons won't harm her, but you probably want to press the bottom right one if you don't care for these wacky animations. I know a way out through the basement. Come on, let's go! So now we've freed her, we're getting out of this mess. So let's go through the basement, like she said. Oh, frick. Nah, the scientist is actually a bit of a pushover. The Uzi basically stun locks him and his assistants with ease. You'll never get off this island alive! This island will self-destruct in 15 minutes. Oh, now we're on a timer, huh? Uh, 16 minutes is good enough for me, though. Let's get out of here. Oops. Uh, 
a, quite a messy way to go. Sadly, this theft is invisible on the CD version, even though I added the right file to the folder. Might be an issue on my end, or they could have hard-coded it out. Sad either way. Okay, so we're gonna avoid the slime pit and make our way out. Hey look, a plane! Maybe we can use it to make our way off this accursed rock before it blows up. Oh, you're afraid to fly. Okay, take this drug then. Yeah, that works. Let's go. Oh, uh... Did, did that turn her into a zombie? No, 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 no. I, I, I think the scientist did something to her. We need to rescue her, but the game doesn't exactly tell you how. <sighs> Let me explain it for you. When the scientist dies, he drops a vial. Grab that vial, then get out of his BDSM dungeon. I hope you also grab that beaker and syringe in the one building. You'll need those too. At some point, either before or after you fight the scientist, you'll need to make a pit stop by the cave with the crystal. The crystal is part of the antidote, and another part of the antidote can be found if you take the portal found in the nose of the crystal cavern. Yes, that's a face. Funny, haha. <laughs> Once you have all ingredients of the antidote, you need to combine them. Flower in the beaker, vial in the beaker, then crystal in the beaker, then beaker into syringe. Now you have to go to the Oracle's temple to give it to her, uh, uh, for some reason. Now you must go. Okay, so now let's get off this island for real. That plane looked to be the ticket out, so let's give her the calming drug, then get out. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, game. Just toss in a Sam site, why don't you? Stupid Sam site. Sam your site. We need to pry it open with our machete, then cut the wires. Don't cut the wires in the wrong order, though. Unless you want... Okay, green, red, blue. Let's get out of here. Give her the drug, start the plane, and... Uh, <laughs> phew. We did it! We beat all the dead! All we get, though, is a three-second ending animation before the credits, huh? Well, if you look carefully, there's a raft in the plane. You can alternatively take that raft, head out to the sea, and while you're at sea, you fire the flare guns one good shot. As a result, you'll be greeted by another three-second ending animation before the credits. I like how it ends with a question mark. No, it's the end, buddy. Rainmaker Software most certainly did not make a sequel to this game, and it's probably for the best. While the game most certainly is not the worst FPS ever, it definitely isn't an award winner. I do commend the efforts of the artist and the composer. Even if the latter's work can get pretty repetitive even with the additional tracks the CD-ROM version of the game gave us, the highlight is definitely Mick Freeman's unique art style. All the animations in the comic book, while not completely professional looking, do give the game a strange charm that almost makes me overlook its many, many flaws. Almost. It was also credited for most of the voice acting, and its corniness kinda grew on me. Take it, Jack Dunbar. His unique talents didn't go unnoticed. In fact, he was probably one of the most successful members of Rainmaker. Some people might have known him better as Toon Smith Productions. Right now his channel on YouTube has over 500,000 subscribers, and his most viewed video on that channel has 40 million views. Wow. When you compare the art style and a bit of the sense of humor of this game and his videos, you can definitely see that he put his mark on this game for sure. Unfortunately, we lost him a bit too soon. He passed away in 2014, at the rather young age of 44, due to complications from diabetes. Damn. Thinking about you, Mick. As for the rest of the crew, I wasn't able to find too much info on them. I did find that a good number of them, including Mick, worked on another first-person shooter a few years later, Nerves of Steel. Now that's another really good game I might have to check out in the future. Well, I hate to end the video on a somewhat somber note, but the one-of-a-kind legacy of these developers lives on through this weird game. It's still not that great, but it most certainly is memorable. No doubt that thoughts of this game will stick to me, and maybe you as well. But that's it for the first episode of Really Good Games. If you liked the video, thumb it up. If you want, you can support me with my coffee link in the description. Never necessary, but always appreciated. Thanks for watching, and until next time, toodaloo.
right away. This exit animation is really something, huh? 